The pre-Socratics were the earliest of Western traditions philosophers. They were concerned primarily with three problems, the problem of substance, the problem of number, and the problem of change. With the problem of substance, the question was always, is there one substance or is there many substances? Thales was the father of philosophy, and he and two other friends, Anaximander and Anaximenes, together were called the Ionian physicists. They lived on a small island in the Aegean Sea called Ionia. His dates approximately were 580 BCE. His question, what substance must underlie grass, for example, to allow it to be transformed into milk? He wondered, there has to be something that underlies all substances. It has to be constant. Now, there is a fragment from his writings that says, the cause and element of all things is water. The one, thought Thales, was water because it transforms itself into the many things. Thales also thought that the earth was a flat disk floating on water. All things are filled with gods. What possibly could this fragment that we found mean? Well. Rather than attribute all phenomena to the old Greek gods, Zeus and the like, Thales thought that there was cause and effect in each of the elements. He was the first scientist. Now, he had a student named Anaximander, also concerned with the problem of substance. But Anaximander was different. He thought that there were divine origins of reality, and his dates were approximately 610 to 546 BCE. His question, how can water produce the many things of our experience? He said each of the elements, earth, water, fire, and air, has a beginning, and there had to be something itself which had no origins. He called this something Aperon. Now, for an Aximander, Aperon was unobservable, it was unspecific, it was unlimited, and it was boundless. According to Anaximander, the earth was not a disk, but a short cylinder surrounded by fire and buffered by air. Another of Thales' students, Anaximenes, had his own theory. Anaximenes' dates were 545 BCE. Anaximenes asked the very logical question, how could water give rise to fire? Now, for Anaximenes, he, like his teacher, thought that the primordial substance of air, in fact, it was a substance, a natural substance, that the reality was a natural substance, and it was air, and it was more or less compacted. In order to have many things in reality, air rarefied or condensed. For Anaximenes, the earth floats on air like a leaf. Now let me ask you, do you think that reality is one substance, or do you think there is more than one substance? Well, if you think there is more than one substance, you would be called a pluralist. Empedocles, who was around 440 BCE, thought that there was more than one substance. He said there were four, earth, air, water, and fire. 
Now, what changed those substances were two dynamics, eros, love, and thanatos, death. Do you think this sounds familiar? Mr. Freud, perchance? The world process is circular. This is what he thought. There are periodic cycles. Elements change from hot to cold, wet and dry. Another pluralist named Anaxagoras thought there were many more than four substances. He thought that there were no indivisible particles. In fact, all things were together, infinite, both in number and in smallness. And when all things were together, none of them could be distinguished for their smallness. He thought about something called noose, which was intelligence. And he said, noose is infinite and self-ruled, the finest of all things and the purest. And it has all knowledge about everything and the greatest power. All things are in the whole. The atomists, and we can see here uh, a painting from the Renaissance period of Democritus. The atomists lived at 460 BCE to 370. Democritus said that there were innumerable worlds that arose from the collisions among the infinite atoms moving in a void. Can you imagine that they thought about atoms at this early period of time? Democritus and Leucippus, his friend, also said that these small particles move and they swerve with their own free will. So he accounted not just for the determinism of material particles, but that they swerve of their own free will. Tell me what you think. Do you think that there is one substance or many substances? It's a perennial question. What is the nature of reality? Stay tuned.